Didn't Jeff Bezos say that customers always right no matter what? If you have a customer based business. Well, she's every and business, also, right? No, that's not right. <laughs> what? It, it, there's there's something to be said about a business that you literally want everyone to be buying from, a la Amazon. But if I'm a person, well, it's I, not a business that is servicing everybody. I was just using Amazon as an example. It, but like. Let's say it's a niche business that only a couple people buy from you, right? Let's say you have 10 customers and they spend a lot of money with you. Yeah, that is You're not going to tell them to go fuck themselves. And even if it's 500 customers, that spend a medium amount of money with you. If it's... if it's Because you want to retain them. If you have to retain people that aren't loyal and, and maybe the disloyalty comes from bad service, which is just not great services, services needed. But if I'm someone and I'm trying to do something and I have to rely on people nitpicking from a low to medium price on Instagram, I would veer towards not having to cater to those people. It could be said the thing of like, 300,000 customers have a lot less to say than $300 customers. $300 mm -hmm. customers complain a lot more and blah, 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 which is probably true. Not to say service isn't needed, service is needed, but if it's egregious, then I would rather not need a $300 customer. Okay. Now, in the case of Amazon, where your customer is just general, a generalist company, company, customer. Yes. Utmost customer service is needed. What about in and out Lots of customers. Very general. Low cost. Yeah. Very general. Need to be nice. But you don't need to be nice when it's not a general customer. Is your argument. If you're giving what is said to be given, then... You still need to be nice, but if there's people acting up, if there's act ups. Well, let's it, not, let's say it's not an act up because some customers like, yeah, I agree with you there. But it, let's it, just say like, let's just say I'm not the smartest guy in the world and I need like a little extra help. Like I come to you to like service my speakers or something and you fix them. They work fine. Right. But I like don't know how to work them now because it's a little different and I call you and you're just an asshole to me. I'm never going to use your service again. I'm going to tell my friends not to use you because you're a dick. Even though you're cut, you fixed my speakers. Still kind of general. But That's yeah, not general. That's niche. But what I'm saying is if you put yourself in a position and you have to take calls of a customer and you're not putting out things that are like, will always solve what the customer wants with like content. Say, this is how you fix your speakers. So you don't have to be called upon. You don't have... An, uh, customer service automation setup. If you put yourself in that position, it's a bad position to be in. Well, oh yeah, I agree with you there. But let's say it's not you personally; it's your employee and yes, your customer should, service should, is also should not ass. be dicks. What I'm saying is there should be expectations if you're in a certain line of work, and that is a work where you can one survive without a general customer. And two, not be put in a position to have to deal with people complaining where it, it is not needed. If there's complaining and it is on your fault, and every every complaint is good feedback. Like the negative stuff is a lot more valuable than the positive stuff. Um, but you shouldn't be in that position. And I, I don't skew dick. I do skew. You should be polite to people. But. I, if there's act up, if there's things that are out of line with what has been contracted for, like, this is what I'm giving you. I put content out every day. You can literally do a lot of stuff. Not like, Hey, I bought a thing and the thing that I bought hasn't been done yet. Go do that thing. You know, that's a given, but little jerks that paid $50 that won't be loyal to you. It's not.
worth of time. I was saying a comment of, hey, you showed up five minutes late. Do you feel? I feel you. I agree with you. But that doesn't stop the bad reviews that deter future customers. That is true. That is my issue. That's my problem. Yeah. So like, you know, that's my, my point is every, you got to do everything in your power to not get bad reviews. That is what would come in with, okay, this person, you you need to have like 10 X more positive (laughs) armies at your wield. You know, you got to be like, all right, if I comment my course, if comment, my course helped you and you have a YouTube comment full of flowing comments, then that will show your proof of worth, your testimonials versus a one star on trust pilot. It's all risk reward. You got to have more reward than you have risk. You got to have more good than outweigh the bad. 